Look who we found. Barnacles, and I don't have a voice. We're, we're gonna have to like either speed that up or slow it down, right? I mean, that's the only way to start a video with Barnacles. I agree. 120%. <laughs> 80%. Your choice, just roll a dice. <laughs> yes, all right, dude, what, what's going on here and what are you doing here? Well, Ultimaker, the guys that make these awesome printers behind me, I've been using their stuff for years. They finally said you have pretty much the coolest videos on YouTube with our product. Want to come to New York? So these guys right here, I've been making a Cartesian type printer. It's the most reliable printer I've used. I've actually printed something pretty awesome with it. Sir, oh, actually it's in use right now. Halo Master Chief Helmet, you can just use your awesome editing magic to yes. put it in. They basically work on three axes, basically forward, backwards, up and down. There's many other types of printers, but this is the most standard and reliable. That's the one over here, right? Yes. And for all intents and purposes, this printer and the new printer are very much the same. Just the new printers, lighter weight, faster, more user friendly. They both work on the same principles. Can you use a printer to print another printer? You can use a printer to print about 50% of another printer. But the metal you can't. components in there. Yeah, you can even print the belts. They got like a rubber material so you can print belts now. Oh, but wow. you can't print metal bearings, you can't print circuit boards, you can't print LCD screens, so you know, eh. I, I, I got a question. Um, is there any key thing that really separates these from all the other different, uh, you know, 3D printers out there? Yes, these are actually reliable. <laughs> Every other 3D printer I've played with breaks constantly and you got to fidget with it and mess with it. These you just don't. They just go and go and go. Yeah, I will, I will say this. Wendell, he loves to tinker with stuff, but he got one. He, he got like a generic something, and he had to basically rebuild the entire thing, and now it's pretty reliable. But he yeah. had to rebuild everything. Dude, Timmy Tech TV bought a solid doodle, and I think he's been through like a spool of material, and he still hasn't even printed like the test print successfully. So, sorry, solid doodle. These are just more reliable. That's why I'm here, and I'm not a solid doodle. I, I, have, I have no experience. You should, you should get some. Yeah. Or I could just order stuff from you, right? You, I, I really want some of those um, some of those hooks you, you made for uh, the, the console controllers to hang on the side yes, of the desk. Yes, those are awesome. I really and want some of those. The best yeah. part about them is when you break them off, you just print the new ones and slide See, in. That, that made me want to buy a 3D printer just for that one little thing. I'm like, I'm going to spend like a couple grand just so I can have a few hooks to hang my console controllers. It's yes. That, that's the level of insanity. Yes, I printed hooks for my headphones too. It is a hooker of a machine. All right, uh, what's the coolest thing here? The coolest thing here is right over here. Let's take a look at this. This is actually Ronin. It was created by an artist. His name's Aaron. He's actually here somewhere. Uh, it was printed in 400 separate pieces. Has over a thousand hours into it. And every single piece is meticulously printed in different materials and assembled. It's freaking amazing. No painting. Each one of these different colored parts is printed in different material. Now, how long would something like this take to, to print? Just to print that, if everything went well and you didn't have to reprint anything, I would imagine that probably has 150, 200 hours of print time. That's unreal. You got any questions? No. <laughs> are you Are you sure? Yes. She's gonna, very, he's very just, direct. Just like lurking that. over there. All right, man. Uh, really awesome to see you. And uh, I'm sure there'll be uh, plenty more crazy things to come soon. I love you. Oh, this is a special moment. Thank you. And I love you too. <laughs>Okay, we're here with Circuit Scribe. These, uh, these guys successfully were kickstarted. It was pretty awesome. But basically, it's a pen with conductive ink. So you can draw out a circuit diagram and things will work. Like this one up here, where you just touch these two pieces of paper and ends up the LED. So it's, it's a really kind of nifty little little device. It's something to check out. It's called Circuit Scribe. I'm totally getting a hold of one of these. Makes prototyping a hell of a lot uh, more interesting. Like an earlier stage of prototyping. There's a squirrel. So we bumped into Amar, and uh, you've got a device it allows you to connect with your phone through Bluetooth. What is this? Yeah, oh, basically uh, it's called a one shield. It's a board on top of the Arduino that allows your phone to be any Arduino shield. So basically we have here an app on Android uh, that has a list of all the phone that, all you have on the phone basically. So accelerometer, camera, you can log data on it. Your Facebook can post on Facebook, right? So, the, so does your Arduino. So basically you like select the shield you want and you use the accelerometer like to get the data. Uh, from uh, to the Arduino and you can trigger the Arduino like to take a photo and post it on Twitter So basically all everything you have on a phone you get it on Arduino. 
Uh, what are some of the things, like three things that you really like to use this for? I can see businesses using that for just that purpose you said right there, yeah. but what are some other things that you use it for? Yeah, it's, it's uh, generally for rapid uh, prototyping. I mean, everyone who wants to like make or prototype his product really fast, with just one line of code, he does it, he does it, and uh, with the phone, he doesn't have to import any components from outside, right? All right, and then if you're done, what would you need to do? Like if you wanted to build a device, you go get, uh, maybe if you're making a camera, go get a sensor and then actually implement it in there instead of using the phone sensor to make your final product. Yeah, I That's mean, kind of the idea. Yeah, we, we, we had that like uh, troubling us a long time. That's why we built the One Shield. Yeah. Nice, right, man. Well, right. Thanks very much. Cool. If you guys want to uh, check it out, where do they go on the web? Yeah, uh, OneShield.com. All right. Yeah. Thanks very much, right. man. Thank you. Capital College has created a board game where you move a rover from point A to point B, but how do you do it? You do it with cards. These cards over here, how, what do these cards represent? Well, they're basically like programming. You're using the cards to write a program. You can stack your own deck, and then you basically play them all and run your program to see what it does. And while you're doing it, you have to connect, collect as much of this information as possible, and then you have to end over here. So if you collect all the information and don't make it to the end, you fail. You can also do it by playing one card at a time, or you can shuffle the deck and then either play a card or discard it. It's kind of a, you know, just a programming, programming exercise. I, I failed, but I think, I, I think it might have worked. Is it okay? Yeah, it's pretty good, yeah. I thought, I thought I did well. I'm just congratulating myself. This is, turn it off. Good job.